how are you doing today? A crazy week in cannabis legalization news, so we're going to kind of get right into it. Uh, what ended the week was this letter right here from the Cannabis Regulators Association. It's dated September 15th, and it was directed at the United States government, uh, including many of the people in the actual uh, administration. They previously sent letters to all members of Congress earlier this year. We have a lot of federal news, including some stuff that I guess some one of the one of the channels that is hanging out is The Strange Show. Um, shout out to them. Uh, they're asking about what Schedule 3 means. We have a whole bunch of rescheduling news that we're going to be talking about. Uh, the stuff that Canra sent uh, on the end of the week, September 15th, more federal cannabis legalization news. Not about scheduling, uh, about the THCA loophole. But let's go ahead and start doing the news of the week. Miggy, what's happening? Hey, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy yeah. Sunday to everybody. Welcome. Hopefully your team's winning the football games if you care about that stuff. So Bears, huh? Bears not doing so well. Oh, no, they're 0-2 now. That's I was, uh, I was hanging out watching the Barracks game, and I'm like, sad. Sad. <laughs> but anyway, um, speaking of sad, there's uh, the first story mm. that we have. Uh, what do you have up there, Miggy? You got the, the screen already up? Yeah. Yep. Government analysis. Government analysis. Go ahead. So. I was say uh, the uh, likely to reschedule marijuana, but this has been like a roller coaster of a couple of weeks, right? Not really, not really, man. Uh, you see, what it, how it's built, how the Controlled Substances Act is built, or the CSA, you know, because usually I don't say the name of a law without then creating a definitional about what it is, and then referring to that definitional later in my conversation. Sure. Um, right, uh, and so the other thing is resize us, dude, but. Um, what they are saying is that the HHS gets to find the facts. Thank goodness. Mm. And then the DEA has to listen to HHS for the facts regarding the science. So if the HHS says that it does have medical use and mm. it should be in Schedule 3 because it is no longer finding those facts that kept it in Schedule 1, therefore the DEA should then deschedule. Also, Merrick Garland is in charge of the DEA. He's the, you know, uh, he's in charge of the whole Justice Department. He is the Attorney General of the United States. Uh, as a result, if anybody in DEA is like, well, I don't want to, he could have him fired. So uh, that's one of the reasons why it is extremely likely that, like, our, our dispensary, and you know, I don't have, tune in next week, I mean, we can go over the financial model, but we got an offer, dude. So Sweet. it was a pretty good one, yeah. I got, I got a pretty um, cool idea about that, too, but, like, it's a more of a like jokey joke so i think we do like a, a gofundme kickstarter right we're gonna call no. it people's pop shop <laughs> oh, oh god no no absolutely not we're <laughs> shutting that down before it even gets started tell you what we'll a b test this we'll do what i want to do and then we'll do that too and then we'll we'll count the monies after like certain increments like quarters quarterly we'll count the money i couldn't even yeah. money when i lost my job so i couldn't even imagine just trying to have a fun money thing but this schedule three though you know like you know there's been talk about this for what two three weeks now where uh, it came out uh pretty much about two weeks ago yeah it's yeah. crazy and then like the, the, the hoopla, though, the, the people uh, upset about it, which I, I get, right? Ideally, this should be just unscheduled like alcohol, right? This would be like cigarettes, right? That, 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 that's the ideal. Well, but, again, what, but, go to your cigarettes, everybody who's smoking them, and then crush them, and you're going to throw them away. But before you do, turn them over and see there will be a stamp on the bottom of that pack of cigarettes, and, and they will say taxes paid. And so every state still affixes their tax stamp. They still get to wet their beaks. And that is exactly where we're going in cannabis. There is going to mm -hmm. be some form of tax stamp, for, which is interesting considering the 1937 Amer uh, Marijuana Tax uh, Act. But at the same time, moving into the future, uh, it, that Schedule 3 is going to hopefully be exempted by a Garland memo that he is currently writing. Mm. Uh, that's one of the things we want because it is within the power of the attorney general to exempt a, a schedule three manufacturer growers uh, or processors uh, and also distributors people selling the shit or like sure. transporting it. Uh, and if they did that like if you have a state license you can register that state license with the dea and then you will be exempted uh, you, wonderful loophole because then otherwise then, then you don't have to go to cvs 
then it's not a uh, pharma pharmacopoeia mm. weed, you know, uh, and provided that this, and then, then not only that the States get to win because you don't have, um, this source of revenue that they've all banked on just getting shut off and having to get yeah. how much like money in terms of like a sales tax revenue does CVS bring when they come or like Walgreens bring when they come to your city. Like you don't have to have like a host community agreement for a Walgreens. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to like say we're going to give this much and then you're and then the communities also like we open up in uh, where we're opening in Peoria County. Uh, they get 3% and you don't get 3% from Walgreens. They don't want that. Well, I mean, I mean the, the Walgreens thing is, is, is something, but again, we're talking about trying to protect the existing markets, right? It's not like, not like rescheduling to schedule three, like creates a new market. It, it just enables protections. Right. But, but also it's kind of like, like like uh like here in Washington State, when we first legalized uh, cannabis, when it became the the law of the land for recreational use, one of the things was the the DUI thing, right? Like people cried about like how are we going to enforce DUIs and all this stuff, but you know it's kind of like how they're already doing it, right? Like 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 people get caught and things, you know, people do stupid stuff, and and those are the ones that are the bad players. Whereas, I you know for the most part, you know like for me, activism has mostly been about the cannabis consumer just wants to be a law-abiding citizen. There's no special like thing about it. I mean, it's medicine. It's also a fun Friday night. So, you know, that's it. But it's going to be scheduled. And so if it's scheduled and it's Schedule 3 and it's also a fun Friday night and there's all these state licensed actors currently there, if you could exempt them and give them a pass until the regulations, or maybe that's part of the regulations, it's mm -hmm. regulated at the state level and so for this particular plant, which again, should be in generic status. Remember, we were doing the podcast when the patent 6635.07, like, I'm sorry, I think I, I missed a nine in there, uh, expired. Uh, yeah. That was interesting that we're like, we're like, you remember the patent with the cannabinoids and neuroprotection rinse and antioxidant? Like, yeah, and we pulled it up and it was going off patent that day. And yeah, so it's yeah. been off patent now for two years. It's generic. What are you going to do? Like, this isn't oxy. It's not, <laughs> you know? Well, you know, no matter what it is, though, it always comes down to like someone willing to put their money into it take an adventure that they're not going to get well rather they would pay the fines in the end versus going to jail right like that's what we're talking about here uh you know i shared with you that some more news uh video i don't know if you've seen yeah. it but it's titled hey how's the legal week going something he brings up at the beginning of the video which i wanted to ask you about like right now because we're talking about the the uh the coal uh, uh memo and all that is you know all that is part of the yearly refunding right so if the government goes you know, ghost for a while with no funding. Does that mean now they can actually arrest people during that time? Because no, the memo hasn't been renewed. Yes. At that point. Yeah. The F Robach or FAR protections expire at the end of the month, everybody. So if you're Seriously. operating a medical license in Oklahoma and think you're fine, yes, until the end of the month. And so that's but, why we have to fund the government. But that's, you know, part anyway, of this strange shows like asking though. about that. Like, uh, the average growth facility even passed the regulations for a schedule three manufacturing facility and no like Ooh. very few people are building to that level of compliance that's why you need to exempt the industry for the interim and so everybody who has a state level license would then be exempted so that they are okay and whatever they're doing is not a crime so if you read schedule yeah. um, if you read section 823 of the, of the csa the controlled substances act you will see that the attorney general has this power to exempt uh, the manufacturers and producers, I apologize, it's the same word, manufacturers and distributors of uh, the, uh, the Schedule Three substance. And, and that means that in this memo that hopefully is coming from Merrick Garland, you will be able to say, look, I have a state level license. Uh, I'm exempted for right now. And uh, it might only be for that, that fiscal year or until regulations from DEA get in place, which may take two to four years. How long did the, the hemp regulations take after it was legalized by the 2018 Farm Bill? Fucking years. Uh, and then here we are now, and that's like, we're not gonna talk about this aspect of how the industry could become even more profitable unless you're in the THCA side. Uh, but 
it's not oh. going to be the worst thing in the world. You know, it's going to be like, I'm not sure we need a form of C. We, I still want to form a C corporation, but I'll oh, yeah. tell you that it's a different reason altogether than like, I want to make you a millionaire, dude. And so like, we can do that now through LLC thro flow throughs as a schedule three, if we're operating that dispensary. And I just have to like help you make sure that, you know, we get the right accountant involved and it's structured right for, you, you know? Yeah, I know. I think the great the question, though, as far as like the already existing businesses being qualified for like, it's really about best practices when it comes to like being a farm or a grow, right? Like, uh, we unfortunately hear about like, horrible stories in some of these wreck markets where they're like, you know, uh, mold is okay, or uh, the stagnant water, you know, these no air circulation, there's definitely a lot of things that are like what makes a thing medical grade versus you know smoking your your homeboys uh we and meet in this garage you or know? just hemp thca you know like but then that stuff still has to be grown pursuant to a license i tell you the next story we should probably get into we're yeah gonna burn on to 320 i'm sorry 420 before we can get there do you have the next one already up the yeah, i do the 14 yep. gop congressional lawmakers tell dea keep marijuana in scheduled one Hey, my thing's not popping up. Uh -oh. uh, let me see if I can help out real quick then. Let me just do a share screen window. Uh, oh, shoot. I have the show notes up. Let me and move that to over there. Ah, you hey, got it. there we go. <laughs> so anyways, uh, reject top health agencies recommendations. So the Republicans don't believe in science as usual, it seems. Um, I hate to say it, dude, that, you know, this is a two party system, like period, right? Like I don't. Try. I know you're a Democrat and like I'm just like always been an independent since yeah. I could sign things like I just didn't want to I don't have faith in either one but as a gamer to, to to see the present thing that's in my best interest that's just all the Democrats right now and so coalition of 14 Republican congressional lawmakers is urging the Drug Enforcement Agency DA to reject the top federal health agency's recommendation to reschedule marijuana instead keep it the most restricted category under the CSA it's like heroin yeah yeah but like how many of those 14 congressional republicans are doctors if i was going to be a betting man and i don't like to be i'd say zero what? i be. just don't find any of these people serious though the republican party like even like top down like that like even like the we all experienced the last four years as adults is for some reason they cling to their their head dummy and i just don't get this whole uh i can't take you serious like this is not a partisan issue this is a, yeah. a, 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 you know, American issue, like a human issue. This is a, my neighbor and, and me personal. How about, how about a personal wellness issue? I don't know, but. Right, right. Uh, freedoms, like limited government, not yeah. Gestapo, like that tells you what, what, what plant, what flowers you're allowed to grow. Literally right. schedule one weed is tell the federal government telling you what flowers you're allowed to grow, which is weird. Well, it's also limiting your options for wellness, right? Because we talked about like safer access, right? So I have to go to back alley and, and, and get some weed that like, I don't know, could be mold, you know, but could like, be moldy. it's the only option I got. It could have been made with Eagle 20 for all I know. But like, that's the whole purpose of regulations, the rules, the checks and balances, right? Like safe access is safe weed for both patients and uh, uh, even end users, regular consumers. Right. Right. Yeah, I tell you, it, it is one of those deals. I thought you were still going to be on the 14 oh, like, GOP congressional lawmakers saying, stop it. They sent the letter to DA Administrator uh, Ann Milgram and senators. Here they are. James Langford. He is a Republican from Oklahoma and also Pete Sessions. He is a Republican from Texas. Uh, they led a dozen other colleagues in both chambers in arguing that the decision to reschedule cannabis should be based on proven facts and science not popular opinion, changes in state laws are the preferred policy of an administration. And you know uh, what? Which, what, is it about how they can't actually study the plant so it could never be about proven facts and science? Well, no, I mean, I just agree with that statement, but like the point is like the beginning of the, the actual law, right? The, the origins of this horrible story that the reasons why we got a podcast and there's a whole process, the whole legislation, the whole learning about this boring, sexy thing known as government, it's uh it's hard this is this is ridiculous but uh, that these people are are, are 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 think they're serious they think they're the adults in the room and, and it's not uh, i don't think we're going to get any progress 
unless you know what we talked about the re descheduling right like people are well, mad about the descheduling yeah but, but progress. It, they said bipartisan i'm sorry bicameral and so if this is both senators and representatives that means that out of the 535 people on the hill 14 of them object 14 over 535 i can't do in my head but i think it's less than 10 percent by a mile sure by, sure by a bit you know and they might be the smallest but they're like a very vocal very loud part right well that... my my what i would say to them is fuck you yeah, you're mean, not only that's... the minority you are the aberration minority and get out of our way because the law that you support and put into place is hurting people and like the other what about the, the so 14 minus 535 can i do that <laughs> shoot yeah, uh, and so uh, there's five that's one and then to the next one so we're at like what 431 and so those people are 421 but those also people they want it or they want it enough to not go on the record and say stop mm -hmm. right well it's also not a detriment to their uh their constituency right like they apparently live in areas that are still uh, prohibition ridden most likely i mean i've used to travel as a technician so i've seen uh that's how, how come some... you've been that's why we got you at social equity because you've been arrested in multiple states yeah <laughs> i'm just a traveling uh freak show a traveling arrest record oh but i just i just think these you know the america's written so the the constitution the all that stuff is written so like the small person is supposed to have higher representation right well, well, that's that's why we have the Senate. So the small person right. or the smaller states can't be drowned out by the Californias of the world. Oh, the, dude, don't forget to hit the you have to unselect that brand and then select that brand. But we'll be back because uh, it is 20 past the hour, which means that it is 420 somewhere, everybody. 422 is 422. You don't have an intern. You know what grinds my gears? What was that? My most recent video, which is good, it was just 18 plus. Oh, yeah. But by the time we like uploaded it. And so like a lot of people have not seen it yet because it was 18 plus like basically immediately. And and the guys over at Playstack who are the producers, you know, we, uh, they do a great work. But yeah. they have shit. I own this. Um, and this is why I think it happened, um, because What's that? maybe right there, oh, that might have well, done it, that oh, might have done it. But that, dude, yeah. you know what, but you can't, you gotta stop I want asking. you guys to check it out. Yes. And check then if that. we do get like a, uh, a, a copyright strike, it's our own copyright, so it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, I'm going to share that out there with the people that are tuning in. And thank you. We've got about 300 people tuning in. Yeah. Uh, we have maybe, uh, what was that called? The Strange Show was tuning in earlier, yeah. asking some questions. Strange Show, if he hit us up on email, we'll be having them on soon. We're going to have DOT Doctor. Uh, that I don't believe is the name of his stuff, but it's Dr. Nusi. And uh, he's going right. to be coming on, I think, next week to talk about um, how... What, what does Schedule 3 mean for all the truckers out there, right? Because mm. that, that's a large population. It's like two, more than 2 million employees are, have a CDL license. And he has a, a channel that's directed to them. Uh, Strange Show has got a channel that is directed for like weed. He does a great yeah. job. Wonderful production value as well. Uh, and so, yeah, it, tune in to Cannabis Legalization News. Hit the uh, subscribe bumper and then we'll... We'll get into the next amazing story of the week, which may actually finally be this this one that I, I got the letter from Friday. And it's and it's it's been happening like last Friday. This case from Arkansas about uh, Delta eight. The next Friday, this I mean, what's going to happen next week? Who can tell? Right. Uh, which one was the next one? Do you have lined up? Uh, I don't know. I did not get to. Uh, Oh, the next one's supposed to be the uh, the DEA misspoken about the uh, the director. Yeah, let's do that. Company. 
and I'll, I'll go over the, the larger things just to see where that, that is. Cause then we can, oh, there it is. It's, it's under more news. We'll be fine. Oh, got you. We'll be At fine. The end. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, I, and again, this is that's what I was talking about. Like it's been a roller coaster because you know you hear uh, you know whistles of like it's going to be rescheduled, and then like the DEA says, "Yeah, my bad, I I, uh, I spoke ahead of time." But like you know, it's going to happen, and I hope it happens before the election because I think that would be so beneficial to like furthering the the progress of regulation legalization here. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, no, like okay. We have been doing this podcast for a little bit under like four and a half years. We started in February of 19 because I was bored and was trying to make a dollar and 27 to pay my bills. And um, so what we've seen since then are several administrations uh, completely derail legalization in their state. And I think what they're going to try to set up and cast the 2024 election as will be that this complete derailment of all the progress that we've made toward legalization if the wrong person comes to office yeah. i don't think trump is the person who would say that he's going to derail it but desantis give oh yeah well yeah. he said that but i just don't think yeah. it's not so much either trump either because i mean he did sign the farm bill but like it's just his leadership yeah, it's that's... not gonna huh he didn't know what he, like when no well, one yeah. knew what they were signing the farm bill man but look look we both know the guy just signed shit right like even when he signed the uh the truth the, the freedom act Signs for uh, and then yeah, he I mean, goes like, he's told this is the greatest thing i ever. signed that like, yeah but like you know he did do some shit only because it made its way to his desk it had nothing to do with the man's like integrity or uh you know like it, it know. wanted to it was brilliant because it showed that he was doing something yeah. And so he yeah. understands yeah. how to look like you're doing work. If you understand <laughs> how to look like you're doing work, we need to have um, more giveaways. Uh, here, get a copy of the book that I wrote, which there is why go. Mickey found out who I was. Uh, you can do that by giving us a super chat or some type of sticker or other monies that you throw at us for shekels. And then we'll notice it. And then we'll be like, hey, you're getting this. Where do we mail it to? So what's this uh, social equity incubator you got going on? Oh, well, the Social Equity Incubator is a, you are the first winner uh, it, to a certain extent. And then uh, we had another winner in Missouri. Now we're trying to get a winner in Maryland. And then we want to have many, many winners in Illinois next round. We want to have more winners in, in Missouri, but it all depends on how well we can get operational and then have job fairs where we are hiring social equity applicants. We want those social equity applicants to show up, get into our systems for our operations in Maryland, uh, Missouri, and Illinois. And then, you know, it's not just hiring them, it's also promoting them, it's giving them equity opportunities. It's everything that the industry yeah. is supposed to do. And we are uh, good at winning the licenses. And so mm -hmm. uh, we want to like win nine more in Illinois. So have you been arrested or say like uh, in Missouri where veterans were qualifier, you know, go to this uh, yep. social equity. Missouri and uh, Maryland have a very similar social equity definitional. If you live in a zip code that has more than 150 percent of the state's average for cannabis arrests, that is uh, an aspect. If you live there long enough, five out of the past 10 years in both instances. Uh, so that's it's just you can't access these limited markets unless social equity helps you get there so how do you create something <laughs> so that they they actually can launch their business as opposed to fail to launch well i tell you see your time about we... that cannabisindustrylawyer.com baby well and, and you know we're kind of like doing it in real time right like we won the license yeah. now now we're, we're like you said you've already talked to people like I'm fortunate enough to have someone in business who understands business. Like I understand business, but I don't understand like the LLC, C Corp and all that other stuff. Like I understand like- That's, like, that's all I do. Like, do you know, can share of stock yeah. price, calculate it. No, I have yeah, no okay. freaking That's, that's why I'm here. Yeah. That's that's it, that's it. You know, me and Slobodan, exactly. Slobodan, like we get the offer. I'm like, mm. what do you think about that? I don't get this, <laughs> it's fun. You know, and cause right we, now we you guys- pick it apart and make models, you know? 
yeah but like right now you guys have presently like there's a uh, strikes going on with the gti workers i mean there's strikes going on everywhere right everybody needs a fair yeah wage right labor labor wage. is labor is doing its job in america right now Thank you for uh, the that's show. but again that's that's me being a liberal shill right saying that but that labor is important and and they're really helping people hey much love from the strange show if you have or want a copy of the book let's I'll, I'll, all right i have some info from him if he emailed me i will i will mail him that and a care package uh if you would like a mug we can also mail those to you it's We're fun not. times yeah but, but I mean, uh this yeah in real time I, yeah we, 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 okay well, we're well, doing like, it you live, like and we're business. making it up. But that's it. That's yeah. it's it's. Here's how business works. Here's an industry that has a heavy cash flow, a high level of regulatory oversight, uh, and complications for capital. So, like the model that I can build for our dispensary is completely different than the model that I can build for our dispensary if it's in New York or Oklahoma. Uh, it, it's mm. annoying, and so like the industry is really hard. And a lot of people get their faces ripped off, yeah. but then the, there's aspects of it that you can uh, invest in. I mean, like that's one, uh, is a limited market better or is an open market better? Everybody loves open markets, well, especially if you have a lot of money so you could pay. Like, you, Could you imagine if you're sitting on a hundred million dollars and you could like invest $10 million to create a brand and the rest of your business plan was lose $5 million every year and put everybody else out of business? See, open market though implies like a, like real legalization, right? Like a total off scheduling where everybody can try and grow the best hot dog per se. And sure, then, but like, like sell it. Uh, what I just said is the open market. Like the biggest yeah. guy with the biggest pockets comes in, oh, yeah. gets the best stuff and then sells it under your price point all day until you're broke. Yeah. But that's so like what are you going to do in general? Yeah. Yeah. That's why there's only four chicken producers in the whole country. I, I mean, it's all about the, uh, what do you, what do you call it? The, 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 the network, the, the chain, uh, kind of, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's chain. about, it's the CFOs. And so it's about making, and so CPA is not a CFO by the way, but it's about the models and understanding how much cash you have and then tracking that every month or every quarter at least to then be able to, uh, create plans for how you're going to allocate your cash flows. Yeah. Chad says the Amazon model, that's exactly what we're talking about, right? Like, no, no, uh, absolutely not. Present. Absolutely not. That's but, not what we're talking about. The, the Amazon model is Cresco, GTI, um, all of those guys. And then what's, what's the other one? Cresco, yeah. GTI, True Leaf. Uh, um, I think I'm, uh, I'm, I'm totally, Curleaf, you know, everybody who yeah, thought they would just, uh, Verano, I was totally spacing on Verano. Mm. And you should. So... To be able to get all those licenses, to lose seventy, like to to lose twenty five cents yeah. in every dollar, because you're going to be making it up in volume, that's not the cannabis industry. That is uh, mm. software. Gotcha, gotcha. Like MedMen. No, but MedMen too, right? No, they MedMen did were the MedMen were really, really full of themselves. And so what MedMen did was overpay mm -hmm. on assets. And so they would overpay on leases and also on buildings to be in prime real estate. Oh. And then they wouldn't be able to keep people coming in. But also that, that cost that was over there on their head the whole time would also prevent them from having like specials and other things to make sure their customer felt like they were first. Uh, so that's, you know, there's, there's, you just read about like how people fail and you go, I think that's the SOPs. All right. Yeah. I mean, if you're not paying attention to weed, nice you're not watching failure happen in real time. Well, yeah. And so that's one of those reasons why like they need to change the statute to have more dispense. Like if we get this thing open, I want to be t the dispensary for 50,000 people. Like that's it. Yes. We're the closest one. Yes. And that's probably going to be it until they like amend the law i don't know how long that's going to take yeah oh yeah yeah but i love how you look at the uh i mean the location you're looking at the real business side of things and i'm looking forward to the management side of things as far as like our success is going to bank on actually who works for us you know in my opinion right because 
mm-hmm. you know this this could be a, a lottery ticket this could be a thing but i also want to share my success with the people who are making it or helping us you know like that's a uh, i'm just looking forward to that part like just helping out um community uh, somewhere else but it's weed oriented you know right like this weed business is uh raising uh coats for the homeless and uh food you know like uh, back to school right. stuff you know we'll do community things and- well i want like, again one of the things that i want for our employees is a scholarship to become the gan ga mm. so similar to what nice. starbucks does with their black apron uh, we would do yes. with our gan ga on staff and so like no matter what there's always at least one gan ga present and so like when you have somebody who comes in and doesn't really know what they want well, ask that guy or girl. I mean, like, why? Because they're the guy in GA on duty. And then you'd ask them. It's like, so you want this and that? Okay. And then these things are the things for you. Yeah, yeah. Here's your basket We're, size. Yeah. <laughs> no, totally. And I think that's a great uh, attribute to the business that we actually hope to offer. You know, the education, the and quality, mm-hmm. and the price. You know, it's all business. But and that's the non-sexy part of recreation legalization. Because, you know, I remember back in the day when I used to sell, dude, and I would buy and break up and, and meet new people. I didn't, you know, like, it's just as scary for the seller as it is for the buyer, right? I went to a lot of places where I didn't know who you are or what you do, but you learn to, like, know people and, and, and interact. And that, that, my biggest part of my youth was sales and not just the illegal sales, but like sales in uh, the mall. I used to run a store there and all this other stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see our contribution to the world you know yeah yeah it'll yeah. play out over time but um I, it, it looks like it's gonna be okay yeah well tune in tune in next year it'll be uh our production value may be high we might, hey we might have but uh if you're in thca uh, or hemp uh, your production value may not be so the September 15th, uh, 2023, which was Friday, uh, the Cannabis Regulators Association once again uh, kind of just blew a buckshot over the, the, the hemp industry or the uh, intoxicating hemp industry, for lack of a better term. And uh, in their April letter, they sent this to all the members of Congress. And now they're sending it to the... Uh, House Committee of Agriculture and the Senate Committee of Agriculture and Nutrition and Forestry to get this issue uh, in front of the desk of people that it's going to matter to, like those 14 Nimrods that was trying to stand in the way of Schedule 3. We, mm-hmm. As the government does shut down, like remember, the UAW is on strike and the government is scheduled to shut down by the end of the month because that's when we'll run out of money. And its fiscal year will end. So uh, it's not going to last that long. You know why, Miggy? People like to eat? Nope. Because next year's a re-election year. (laughs) Nobody likes to get blamed. And so because it's a re-election year, they have to leave Washington. The 100% of the House is elected every two years. So the, oh, and then shit. 30% yeah. uh, or 33 and a, and a third percent of the Senate is elected every two years. So uh, one third of the Senate, a hundred percent of the house has to get the fuck out of Dodge by February so they can get through the primary, you know? Hmm. So they'll, they'll come up with a solution. Uh, really, you not. So what's the summary of the, of this letter then? Is it just dividing up uh, each no. cabinet or is it saying, no. There's three main points, three main, well, uh, yes. And so the three main points are uh, delineating hemp from agricultural food, fiber or feed from hemp grown for any other purpose, including extraction. That's their number one suggestion. If your hemp is grown for any other purpose, including extraction, which would mean edible, which would mean inhalable, which would mean THCA, which would mean Delta eight, which would mean THCO. Well, that and then, yeah. yes but they they then have that's do they actually have that in this maybe we should kind of like uh, shuffle around a little bit and get get further down in there and then i mean uh, scroll yeah Way deep. Do this. get get the scroll on uh, get okay, there it is yep and i click on that then it comes in and then i can zoom the, the f in on that and so here it is that's the thing the, and then 
Nobody likes this. They are giving these schmoes that get to write the farm bill example stuff. <laughs> they want to become federal law. These are their definitional suggestions. Three people. Yeah. Right. So hemp would not move. And then it does say uh, tetrocannabinol. And as you can see, there is no uh, uh, delta. There is no anything. It just is THC. So like talk about total. Yeah, well, how about we just say tetracannabinol? Concentration of not more than 0.3%. The term like hemp it. does not include viable seeds. And so right there. It's, it's just like another organization limiting a plant that doesn't need to be limited per se is I, the true. definition. True, right, but we right. still have not analyzed this bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Because what also do they say? Hemp does not include viable seed from cannabis if that exceeded total of total tetracannabinol, THC, concentration of 0.3% in the plant on a dry weight basis. So that completely shuts the THCA door hard, uh, oh. like, and Delta eight hard, like bang out, gone. And then it gets into another thing called hemp derived cannabinoid products. The right. term hemp derived cannabinoid products means any hemp derived product that is not the raw plant and is extracted, derived, infused, processed, or manufactured that contains cannabinoids in any other form and is intended for human consumption or inhalation, including but not limited to combusted, aerosolized, inhalation, uh, ingested in any form, and topical products. But this is not law. This is just suggestion. This is all of this. Is this, just, is, uh... this could be the new definition of hemp under the 2023 Farm Bill. That's what that is. Right. But it and if you it. guys want to like share your thoughts on that, because there's a lot of you watching, uh, go ahead right there in the comments. What do you think about this as the new definition of hemp for your industry going into 2024? Almost 400. So yeah. We got it. So we got it. Got it. It's called Don't Stop Fucking That Chicken. That's because uh, we're we're doing it a bit. It's it's an old vaudevillian term that I learned from being a hick from Peoria. Uh, hemp. The term hemp means the plant cannabis sativa L and any part of that plant, whether growing or not, with a total THC tetrahydrocannabinol concentration of not more than 0.3 percent in the plant. They actually reference the plant there. Did you see that in the plant on a dry weight basis? The term hemp does not include viable seeds from a cannabis sativa L plant if that hmm. plant exceeded a total THC concentration of 0.3% in the plant on a dry weight basis. All this does is play off the ignorance of the average consumer and slash American, right? Like, uh, that's why, like, in my advocacy, the most, you can't stereotype the consumer, right? There's no one... You know, not everybody's a college dropout. Not everybody's a Harvard-educated Carl Sagan. You know, there's this gamut of just averagery, sensory, you know? And uh, this is just ignorant. This is just another uh, way to uh, make money. It, 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 it shuts protect. down, like, Wake and Bakery. I went there, and mm. they're just selling, like, THCA-infused pre-rolls. Like, you know, that is hemp until he gets too close to a flame. There's probably some hemp in this pipe, bitch. Uh, oh, yeah, Under sure. the current definition, but not under that definition. And so that definition right there shuts down Delta 8. It shuts down THCA. It shuts down interstate commerce pretty hard. Um, you are just left with the CBD industry, which, as we all know, works. And some people care about it. So it defines THC as anything like, again, become scheduled. It become this highly feared yep. thing. So descheduling, like say the three would help, right? This would protect perhaps those. No? Or just create no, another hurdle? This, this protects our dispensary because it's not going to have any competition from those head shops that are selling weed and Delta 8. Like the gas station? Good for our bottom Delta line. 8? No gas station Delta 8, bro. All gone. Okay. Under that definition right there. But why? That's why. But like what? 
because the definition of hemp is new. It came out in 2014. Right. It was revised in 2018. They're going to revise it again and they're going to drop it to schedule three, which means profits from the actual license industry. Why are we going to spend two million dollars getting operational, get this license, follow all the rules if somebody can just it's hemp under the 2018 so farm bill, THCA like and sell or like Delta eight vapes. I've seen, so this, I'm seeing THCA vapes, which makes zero sense. This really limits it to the state though, right? Cause then wouldn't recreational states, states that are already recreational, they can add this to their catalog, their, their barcode thing, right? The Delta eight sole products. Uh, wouldn't that become now a state issue at that point again? Um, no, the feds say what weed is and what hemp is. And so there would be a line in the sand about what's schedule three. And um, if you have the license to use it or sell it. Yeah, as well. And what's I, what's I, unscheduled. And so they're going to make a clearer distinction because there's a like nobody will tell me that there's not a huge gray area currently in the cannabis industry with hemp oh. with how the definition is and sure. that definition that they just sent on friday to the department of agriculture the committees they aren't the department of agriculture the people that tell the department of agriculture what the fucking law is which means congress finds the facts and so yeah. these definitions are the facts of your ass you know uh, who is this yeah. kind of regulatory body? Like, who are these advisors? Like, okay, you know, that that's another question. There's the signatories. I'm going to go over the yeah. signatory page. Then. Let's go over the signatory page of these people who may be responsible for redefining hemp at a federal level and changing laws. Right? Gillian Shower may have mispronounced that. Uh, PhD, Cannabis Regulators Association, Executive Director, basically the CEO of the charity. And then you have William Tellyberg, that's the president. And then you have a president-elect, past president. So they've adopted a strict or like a, a standard of vanilla corporate structure. Like the ISBA has one where you have like the third vice president. So you don't run for president, you run for third vice president and they groom you. But this is a made-up body, though, right? This is just uh, people. Correct. It guess, is a corporation. Like... It is a. It is an oh. organization of cannabis regulators, regulators association. And here are all their chapters: Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, District of Columbia, Florida, Georgia, Guam, Hawaii, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, and basically every other fucking state that has legal. That yeah, people... is who deals with the industry's ass and i think again these guys in congress are going to listen to them they which aren't, is unfortunate they aren't slouches they but these guys are they're still boneheads that are have uh self intentions right who, who they should be listening to be like organizations it like sounds this, like or... you're trying to make yourself poor miggy if that happens and that becomes the law of the land your cannabis license is more profitable and I might make you another $250,000. How do you feel about that? Yeah. What do you, does that change your opinion at all? Oh yeah. It's still pretend money, man. But even then I think I just want like, That's how it works. I, I just don't think like a, a quality will, will speak more beyond, you know, like an experience slash uh, product uh, is better for my name. Right? Like it's kind of like the whole internet game I've been playing is, you know, somebody a long time ago asked me, you know, like, hey, how can I, you know, do what you do? And I'm like, for the most part, everything I've done has been voluntary, like uh, activism type bullshit. Like even this conversation. Yeah. The reason why we do this every Sunday, you know, I do it with you because I wanted to talk about weed and then talk about the, right. uh, the process for legalization, which, you know. We could sell the license probably for like two to three million dollars. And again, at that point, when we see money cross hands, our, our content will get a hell of a lot better. Well, again, I do this for a living. And so, like, I, I need this for um, merchandising, like marketing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm not sure if you watch There's Only Murders in the Building. But Mel Brooks was on the most recent episode, and it was hilarious. So if you have not seen the most recent episode of that, um, so was Matthew Broderick. And so they okay. made a producer's reference. Um, mm. Just 
made me but laugh real hard. It's, it's still education that we do, right? Like, the, for the most part, yeah. everything that we talk about it, it is always education on the process and what it is in the state and the plant. And, uh, you know, like right now, you got the uh, the senators who's pushing the past the cannabis, the safe the banking act. That yeah, more federal cannabis legalization news uh, and yeah. more of the fallout from the rescheduling of cannabis news. So after cannabis rescheduling, do we still need safe banking? Maybe that, that would help. I would imagine uh, so, it, right? Because the words. Huh? Again, yeah, the, the, the laws that were well, violating we established. Go ahead. Establish what? No, I just I, I I just think like the uh uh the, like for like the the the, the what's the one eighty e for the you know business side two hundred eighty e like the that the only applies to schedule one schedule yeah. two so like as soon as it goes down to schedule three mm. like that's one of the reasons oh. why we don't have to become a C corp anymore and I'm like we still should oh. for other reasons but uh, oh. if you just want to put the money in your pocket you don't really want to be a C corp no but uh. Oh, I didn't realize that. So uh, Schedule 3, we don't have to worry about the, we, we become exempt or whatever it is. Uh, it, it, the, 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 the law does not apply. So the penalty does not apply to you. And so we can deduct that contract that I'll write to Stumari to do all our SEO and, and, mm -hmm. and our production value for all this stuff. And to, to just to build like an IP network of, okay, because I, I, we got like six leads over the weekend. Now imagine that we had a tailored system to take those six leads and just help them give us their money oh. and, 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 again, and get them a cannabis license. This is how you make your living, which is all good, man. I, I, I totally like, you know, you have Literally another good 10. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, but you know, that the, the, the safe banking thing, I didn't realize would only help if the plant was scheduled one or two. I didn't realize. No, that's, um, that's, the, that's the double tax of IRC 280E. Uh, mm -hmm. And so let's imagine we go to schedule three and the, the Garland memo never happens. And so we're not exempted. We are still violating uh, federal law in the sense that you cannot do those activities for business with a schedule three substance unless you've registered with the attorney general, a.k.a. the DEA. And, and so there's no process for you to register for the DEA other than like Walgreens and CVS. You know, like that's how we do our controlled substances with drugs that you go and okay. you pick up. And that's why they it, it, it works that way. It's a highly regulated industry called pharmacy mm. so this would be like an exemption or a no, no a new regulatory rubric that we would have to end graft harvard word by the way you know thanks for tuning so, in uh, yeah but these schedules would do sound good for the business side of things not so much for oh, the end user but yeah. uh, the, the business of people that's, that's, if the business is that the business has an easier time making a profit the end user benefits oh, because course. if then that 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 business doesn't have to gouge for lack of a better term to try to yeah. survive or to like fire a whole bunch of people to try to survive well and, and again cannabis will eventually be like broccoli the, uh, you know because everything's just be. so over tax and over you know they'll get to the point where it, it's passe it's not a you know it's just a, a plant that people either use for medicine or just uh, have a nice day <laughs> Speaking of having a nice day, let's play a little name that strain. We haven't taken a there break in a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Let's 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 do some Keep name that ready. strain after we cue that up. And so that's the nice thing. Oh, this is a hey, uh, hang out because we're going to talk about a pretty exotic strain after this year bumper. Got this at a can of cotton. There it is. Bang! Ooh, what? Got that from Respect My Region. Joey Brandon. Yep. And uh, so this one's straight out of Cali, Seed Junkie. Uh, cross up on there. It looks and, sticky. Um, yep, it is a mix of Biscotti and Jealousy and Sure BX. Uh, an enticing three parent mix that wows all that try the bud. You can find that brand available from Heights Co. at Gnome Grown, Alberta, and Portland. I don't even know what it is. Do we have it written down somewhere? Yeah, yeah. I can put it to you in the private chat and or somewhere else. Moon oh, shit. Oh, High dude. Nine got it. Shit. Yeah. High at nine. 
Yes, Hyatt Nine. Shout out to him. He manages a uh, dispo in WeHo, uh, one of like the most historic dispos in WeHo. So go check out Hyatt Nine if you are、uh, a YouTuber watching us. And then don't forget to check out that one we just did. You have to be logged in and over eighteen plus. So, so Jason it, it Beck did not have a good launch. What's up?、Uh, Jason Beck, that's the gentleman behind Hyatt Nine and、uh, the one who runs Eho,、uh, WeHo.、Uh, he, know, he 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 knows、uh, Robocker. Like、uh, they came、oh, by、cool. Hempfest and、uh, Robocker, old old dude, but like apparently he still surfed and stuff at the time. Which when he was like when he came by, this was pre-COVID. Seemed he like he was like eighty still. I don't know how the dude is. Looks like he's always old, old. But yeah, he's up there like with the constituency and stuff like that. Which you got to follow. Got to check him out. And then there you go. And so maybe like again, if we had like this bill money,、uh, we could turn the cannabis legalization <laughs> news into more of one of these things. We'd have to hire somebody, and we would have tons of these videos that it says like you can't watch this.、Uh, but that's that's pretty fun. And, so,、yeah. and again, yeah, that's just pretty weed though.、Uh, it's、uh, it is a new exotic that's kind of burning it out from、uh, Cali, and then it, it usually. Makes its way all over the United States. After that, is it a indica, a sativa? What's the write-up on that? Let's see here. It is. It, it's an exotic, and so like it really doesn't have an indica or sativa like、oh, okay. tag on it. But it's like you know, it's a high potency cultivar from LA, released in June 22, Bre- bred and grown by Seed Junkie Genetics, Jay Beasy, and hand selected by Doja Exclusive, building up the hype.、Um, and then several other brands, including Heights Co. and Portland, have it. So. They probably talk about their parents, but it's it's a very high THC potency, so like twenty nine to thirty five percent. Yeah, so there's really nothing that says indica or sativa so far. There's purple and orange hues, so that makes me think both, because <laughs> you have purple and then you also have orange. Yeah. What do you think about percentages? Like right now, I got this one in my hand. It says twenty nine percent, and I don't know what to think as far as like. Shenanigans. Oh, there's some、right? baller genetics out there, man. And then there's But, some growers that like know what the fuck they're doing with newts, and like、sure. usually in, it's usually in hydro. And so like I've seen it at Rockwell, and then some people say in Cobalt Choir too. And I'm like, sure. And then、um, the、oh. stuff just is ridiculous, and, and it's、yeah. it's it very it, like the terpenes are just off the charts.、And、so like they've gotten very gr- good at growing very good wheat. No, but I get it. But- Those skills are like that's like the high, that's like the one decile, and so like there's other ninety percent of everybody else who has a license that's in there as well. But yeah, I mean, like the, there's all quality is always going to、uh, win. But like when you're saying like twenty nine percent, are you saying twenty nine percent of a gram that was tested is the、uh, was THC, right? So the testing you have to get, you have to comply with the regulations, and so you're going to test a lot. And by lot, I mean like batch of cannabis、yeah. in compliance with the regulations, and then you're going to advertise accordingly. So if that batch that you test comes back particularly high, you'd like to label as many of your as much of your crop under that test that you can. Right. Yeah. But yeah, you know, maybe I have to dig more into it, and I'll do a show on it because I'm so curious right now. I'm, so, I'm looking at my purple punch that I got, and it says、uh, 29 percent on. You said 35 percent. And I heard someone say once they call shenanigans on anything over twenty five percent. So、uh, the reference of percentages of the gram tested is that what you know we're saying、uh, is the percentage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like out of the sample set, forty percent of it was supposed to be, or like thirty five percent of that was supposed to be like THC, or twenty nine percent of it is. But that's what they're chasing. They're ch- that's that's why they call it an exotic. That's why they grow it、mm-hmm. and how they grow it because they're chasing that yield and potency. Oh sure,、and、it's it's, it's like, you know the guy who ran、uh, in the hundred meters in the most recent Olympics was probably the fastest guy that ever ran it, or one of. And so the records keep getting broken, you know. True story. Yeah, I mean, we keep getting better、uh, as long as I think the rules、uh, protect people, right? We feel less fear、uh, fear mongering to do a thing.、Uh, yep. What about New York? We'll talk about that, or are you gonna want to wrap it up for an?、Uh, yeah, let's、right? talk about New York, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. I'm gonna 
you you talk about New York and do the the yep. doodads on the buttons. So that, okay. <laughs> one of the things that the uh, the the dispo will allow us to do is hire somebody to do the doodads on the buttons, and then like private chat us and be like, "You're babbling." Yeah. Oh, well, right. Yeah, moving along. Read the teleprompter. We have one of those now. I mean, <laughs> What's funny too is so Tom and I've been like pushing against each other. Like we try to share a screen, and it gets taken away and shared at the same time, and it's like. I think I don't know about you, Tom, but I like little anxieties. You keep doing it like shit. Stop. No, wait, click, go. Click. Yeah. But yep. Uh, so New York gave these weed entrepreneurs a leg up. Now they could face financial ruin. So a monthly story green and white sign reading con bud is being erected over the facade of 85 Delancey. So what's do you know that what's going on here then uh, in, in New York? I mean, for the card, yeah. the, the lawsuit. Oh, New York is. Uh, now, if you've ever seen a dumpster fire, you have seen the New York cannabis industry, uh, especially after it was legalized two years ago. Uh, there are numerous lawsuits involved in New York because their regulators created a completely new license that was not found in the statute anywhere and then started awarding them and opening them. So there are people that have legitimate injury and harm on both sides and trying to undo that uh, uh, administrative overreach beyond the grant imposed by the statute. So much so that lawyers are calling for the statute to be amended to try to moot the claims uh, is, is just epic to watch, especially when you consider it's just Michigan. Well, this is something we're trying to avoid, too, once, uh, uh, you know, we do business. So the Gotham spoke yeah. to half a dozen card license holders about what they have at stake. Some borrowed money from family members, put down healthy, hefty deposits of real estate and inked expensive contracts while putting their personal finances and other business on the line. So it seems to me a lot of people got invested and were told the doors were going to be able to open at one time and then the doors didn't open. So between contracts, construction, security, marketing, inventory. Uh, one person and his two partners have invested a million dollars, which I couldn't, you just can't piss that away, right? This is why the crash no, the goes. industry, the industry costs money. It's yeah. expensive to follow their rules is expensive. And, and, and like, it's again, when I said it's Michigan, they're, they are gearing up to issue more licenses. There oh. is nothing standing in between you an operation. If you're the social equity applicant at all like you are getting into michigan michigan is give me a hundred million dollars what are you gonna do i'm gonna spend 10 million dollars to create the best cannabis application like you know the uh, manufacturing thing that i can in michigan and then i'm gonna lose 20 million dollars putting all of my competition out of business and then i'm gonna spend another 10 million dollars after they all go out of business to acquire all of their assets and then i'm gonna spend another 10 million dollars on branding mm. well, and, right. yeah i mean that's that's the that's thing. Well, and also, didn't they initially also like give the licenses to equity people first, right? People who thought they had a chance, and then now these lawsuits right. trickle in, and then actually put a hold on their their product. What do you think? Why did they wait so long for the, the lawsuits to, you know, to enact? Why didn't they just standing? Do mm. Like you have to get wronged to file a suit. Okay, right. I see. That's I see. So it. things yeah. had to happen first, and then you have to wait, and then you can be all pissy about it. Yeah. Correct. There's procedures. So you don't want to get dismissed. And um, that's what they do. But they're doing all of this. And it's going to be Michigan at the end of the day, where the people call, mm. they get the license, and then they package them. And so then it is really, it's like, it's like owning a bar or a restaurant. Is that a good investment? True, true. No. Well, when I mean, you say like Michigan, you're really good, but, you know what to do. True, but like when you say like Michigan too, it's also like revenue generating for the state when it comes not just to the actual businesses involved, but like hey, now we're doing another round of uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Uh, no, no, no. There is a difference between a limited market state and an open market state. So yeah. those rounds of who wants to be a millionaire, they yeah. do not exist in Michigan or in oh, New York gotcha, gotcha. or in New Jersey. Or in California or in Oregon. They exist in Washington, but Washington has one dispensary per 8,000 people. Yeah. They exist in Illinois, but Illinois has one dispensary per 90,000 people. And yeah, at the end of it, after there's like all of the licenses, before they have to change the law, it's one per 25,000. 
In Maryland, it's one per 35,000. So I want to do a video, but I don't want to like get it marked 18 plus where I go, where would you rather have a dispensary, Maryland or New York? Because everybody's going to be like, yeah. oh, New York, because they're stupid. And then I'd be like, no, you don't, because anybody can open up another one right there. In Maryland, they're a limited market state, only for social equity. So that means that not only will fewer be allowed to operate, of those ones that can get the license, most will not f succeed. Sure. So it's just super limited. And, 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 you know, the thing is, like, is this fair? No, but it's what it is. You know, I, I see people whine all the time. Like, but, but why is why is Michigan fair? Why is it fair to have a guy who has $100 million to come in and then build the best stuff, buy the best branding, and lose money until everybody else is out of business better? That's true, too. But, you know, I, I, I think it's just more of a, an opportunity for, like, an average person. You know, like, if... Um, you know, when you're having a session, like back in the day when you were, say, 18, whatever, you're smoking your friends and you're like, you know what? I want to really grow weed for money or do this. In, a, in that moment, y'all like, because that's the one thing we've seen is when it comes to successful people, they have a tight circle and people who, you know, they trust and whatnot. So uh, those people can have a chance. They don't have a chance and, you know, unless they... Uh, you know, yeah, in the lottery and the, the limited side things, right? That's true. Because I mean, they can do the, the equity raising and all the other BS stuff, right? Like, there's and when I say BS, it's just because it's so expensive to get in, right? So it's like opening a restaurant, which still be expensive, but it's like it's like getting listed on the stock market, yeah. And so it mm -hmm. is. It's like opening a real business, but there's there's upsides and downsides for how each state does it. Yeah. And in in the states that you can operate, and like so, our financial model that I use to attract investor interest. Good luck with that one in in my like New York or in an open market state. Yeah, no, I get it. a limited market. You know, is yeah. definitely like I'm fortunate enough to, that we won that. We're gonna be part of it, but it's also weird too. The contrary to like. How I've been, I've been in the first state that legalized uh, cannabis, me, us in Colorado, but yet we still don't have home grow. You guys just got goddamn lounges. Like they just, yeah. uh, you know, so the, 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 where is the culture? Where is the uh, consistency? You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just a weird thing to see evolving as, as America realizes it, it likes weed. Well, no. America's always known that it's liked weed, but sure. uh, uh, just like liquor stores and brothels and, and gambling boats, uh, there are going to be rules. They oh, know yeah. that people like it. And so each state, like some states are dry. I think limited markets are pretty much the only ones that are really left in the sense that uh, they are now the, the red states as opposed to the blue states especially after Pennsylvania and Florida are out of the way. Mm. So you have to kind of understand how they regulate liquor and how they maybe try to make it uh, a more controlled environment. And if it's more controlled, it's going to be more limited. Only so many people will get the licenses. Sure. And, yeah. and, and, then, and then to our advantage too, right? Because we're limited to Peoria. So it's how, how many possible? Oh, no, Maggie, now? I can win these all over the country and have. No, but we I mean, just like need right the now. cash flows. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. This is our beginning, but like, you know, it, it's uh, right now we're limited to pure, which are, our competition is what, five other shops? Oh, no, there's uh, it's one per 25,000. And so there mm. will be uh, 15 uh, eventually in the BLS region. So it is a, a exercise in um, distribution of the dispensary to where the people need it. And so that's that's really the beautiful part about these limited markets where you get the license and then you look on the map and you go, well, if we're the only one here, we can service these people and we can right. service those people. And then you provide service just like a cell phone tower does. But your service is weed, man. <laughs> yeah, and you control the chocolate. <laughs> you yeah. control the, hell yeah, dude. And remember, you got to be 21 and over to uh, play in the game, but you can be 18 to vote. 
That's right. That's right. So the country trusts you more to elect people and get killed than it does to drink a beer. Remember that, young people. Right on, right on. It's been an hour, brother. All right. So uh, should we wrap it up? Yeah. Why not? Why yeah, not? Thanks for hanging uh, with us, though. Three hundred. We do. We do. I have a. Oh yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I think too many licenses holders contributed to the downfall of the organ market. Uh, mm. Yes, that is a juxtaposition for a later video. Oregon yeah. compared to Washington, because even in Washington state, there's like a thousand dispo licenses out there. So it is like one per 8,000 people. That's a well, lot. That's a lot. The thing about Oregon, though, I, I think, because again, when I saw the medical days where free market capitalism, so the best weed, I got really good weed for like 50 bucks, like an ounce. And now i have to pay like 120 or whatever like it's very expensive 150 for an ounce of quality but um you know oregon they just like if you were in business they said okay now you're from medical to recreational in washington they said everybody we're gonna wipe this thing clean none of you all ever seen marijuana before nobody knows how to do business in this uh business that's already been in, in business for a while and it hurt a lot of people. A lot of people got invested. A lot of people uh, got screwed because of the state. Whereas I think in Oregon, those people are getting screwed because of the market and how they did business, period. You know, like maybe you got shitty weed. It's like, no, it's like no, like there's, they wanted to grow it. They grew a lot of it. A lot of it slipped out the back. Oops. Yeah. Same with I mean, California. And so like yeah. when you have an unlimited market, you can have the ability for diversion more. The diversion risk is a lot greater out of Oregon, Oklahoma, and uh, California than it is out of Nevada, Arizona, and uh, Washington State. Fight me on that. <laughs> right on, man. Anyway, that's yeah. our show. And guys, you know where you can find me. I will be at oh, yeah. Benzinga coming to Chicago in a minute. And so when exactly is that minute? It appears that it will be... Benzinga Cannabis Conference, there'll be an after party. Uh, that after party is sometime, but J.B. Pritzker, he's the governor, he'll be there. So the oh, CEO oh. of both True Leaf, uh, the chairman of the board of Curleaf, and the founder and CEO of Cresco Labs. Uh, mm. That'll be highly corporate, so I, I'm looking forward <laughs> to that. Uh, don't forget to, to check me out over at the Benzinga Capital Conference. If you go and buy tickets at this link that I'll put out to everybody, uh, you can get 20% off by using coupon code META20. So, and comments, comments. Thanks, Strange Show. Also just chipped in another fiver. You know, that dude, uh, tune in in a couple. Like he's got a wonderful channel and um, it's different yeah. than ours, but it's, it's good stuff. So we'll be talking with him soon. Hey, what do you, any, anything to close the show with, Miggy? Words of wisdom Smoke, from Miggy. Smoke them if you got them. Smoke them if you got them. <laughs>